Hi, it's Corinne from My Chemical Free House. This video is on the least toxic types of caulking and sealants. Those two words are often interchangeable. Um, so there's two types that you'll need for a new build or renovation. There is silicone, and which is a non-paintable, and then you'll need a paintable caulking for usually around the baseboards, around trim, etc. Um, if you're extremely sensitive, it is possible to use just one type for everything. If your one type is silicone, it's gonna look a little weird in the places that aren't paintable, but there are some ways we could even paint that in, in with special primer in the future. So let's start with silicone. Um, Non-paintable, so bathroom, I definitely need it for um, kitchen counter, almost every kind of kitchen countertop to install them. So um, to have, and if you're not doing a new builder reno right now, have one that you do well with around in case something breaks, your undermount sink falls out, <laughs> falls out from the bottom, um, something needs to be waterproofed in the bathroom, etc. I would definitely keep one around because this is a situation where a contractor just comes in and uses something else and, and it's a really difficult situation to get through if you're sensitive. So three types of silicone. This is the most common type in that it gives off acetic acid. It's super easy to recognize um, when you smell it because it smells like vinegar but times a million it's really and I don't have a problem with vinegar I can smell most paints out of the can but this for me is like sniffing glue it is really harsh when wet it can be it probably is for most people really great when totally cured so I'll come back to that so really harsh when wet this one is an oxine cure um, and it will be usually labeled neutral cure as well, but ne neutral cure is still too broad of a term. We still need to know the chemical cure. So the chemical chemical cure in this one is oxine cure. Um, it's the most mild when wet. I would say basically objectively, but maybe subjectively compared to this one. Definitely objectively compared to this. Um, if you're mildly sensitive, just go ahead and get this one. If you don't need to test them and put them in jars and sniff them, just get this one. Um, have this one ready, know where to buy it. These, oh, these little tubes are not expensive. They're from Amazon. So you can have them for small jobs and you can use them for testing and then you could buy. I'll link to um, the Duracell, which is a bigger oxygen cure, bigger tubes that you can use if you're doing a whole house, new build. So lowest order when wet by far, but slower to go down. And that probably doesn't matter to anyone except the 1% of the most sensitive. So 99% of sensitive people will probably do well with this, but if you're in that 1% most sensitive, test both of these and see which day, how many days it takes to become odorless. So I put them in little bags and then I wait till the day that I think that they're totally odorless. So this is, um, so for me, this one takes 18 days. And I think even for some of the most sensitive, that would be a good number of days and doesn't mean you necessarily need to leave the house for that long, but um, that's something to test first so that you can see. This one actually takes longer, except that it's barely noticeable and it's such a mild odor anyway. Um, you could say two weeks as a general rule for any of them, but if you're extremely sensitive, don't go by general rules. And if you're mildly sensitive, 24 hours. And I can even be in the same room as this one. It's fine for me. So it varies a lot. I don't want to just say at this many, you know, people will say like people who are not sensitive will just say, oh, this one um, has no odor after a few hours or 24 hours, which, you know, that's just their sense of smell. So this one is Alcoxy, so GE2 Advanced. Um, the benefit of this one is that you can find it easily at any hardware store. Um, so if you needed to run to the store, and it is a neutral cure type, um, it's hard to describe this odor. I suppose these could be comparable. I mean, they're different, but like in the level of odor and their tolerability. Um, I, I, I don't know how to, I don't want to give a word to describe it. So sort of different smells, but um, pretty mild. Um, 
This one does have a mildew side. This one does not have a mildew side, and neither does the Duracell, the one that comes in a bigger version, different brand, but same oxine, neutral cure, neutral cure 100% silicone. And um, this one does not have a mildew side either. So if that matters to you, um, usually when something's labeled kitchen and bath, that means mildew side. When something's labeled aquarium cock, it's acetic acid with no mildew side, so it's basically this. And those are really strong and you don't want to get one that's labeled well I, you could if you want but <laughs> i don't get the aquarium cock they're um they're priced really high just because it's a just because of the label like they market it differently and it's really strong so i would say for sensitive people um you have to test them so again this might be better for you at two weeks or 18 days this is probably going to be better for everyone when wet. Okay, so those are silicones. I'll link those. All three of those are from Amazon, so they're easy to get. Um, and again, this one from the hardware store, and then a bigger one, Duracell, that you order online. And so for paintable, paintable, you, I, the best type for most almost all sensitive people would be the polyether. So it's not usually labeled polyether like in the way that silicone is labeled 100% silicone, but um, it's not too hard to find out usually. Um, so I'll list some brands. Um, for paintable, I would say it's more important. So there'll be areas where a contractor might just bring in silicone. They almost always bring in silicone for um, countertops and for some parts of the bathroom. And even if they use the strongest one, it's really just a matter of time and not too much time. I mean, 18 days is a while, but um, it's going to get there. Um, but with the paintable cocks, I wouldn't want the contractor to just bring in their usual. Their usual is usually the one called Alex. It's acrylic latex. Acrylic latex is standard for around baseboards, doors. There really isn't any other type that they would use there. Maybe a siliconized, maybe a latex that has some silicone, but, um, and you could also see whenever you see a silicone that's paintable, then it's a silicone latex mix as well. Um, so I would I don't use that one. I would want to avoid that because um, the odors the odors too high. I mean they're all high. Most of them are high odor at first, even some of the silicones. But it goes on for too long. It's not quick to off gas, and by quick I mean even not a couple of weeks. Um, so I like to avoid that one. It, you know it'd be it's difficult to go in and remove a caulking after and scrape things away, and and it's, it's difficult. So. Polyether is the best one to have around for that. It's not going to be something that a contractor is like, oh, okay, so if you don't do well with acrylic, I'll bring in the polyether because it's, it's not normally used for this. It's not normally used around trim and paintable areas. But so AFM caulking compound is one, and I'll give some other examples because sometimes they're sold out. The pandemic created a shortage in polyether itself. Um, the rubber is a type of rubber. It's a very low odor when wet. Um, and they do come in different colors too, in case you don't actually want to paint them, but um, just to try to match your paint color, um, your wall color. But um, it's very low odor at first, and it only retains, in my opinion, it just retains a little bit of a rubber smell. Um, and same with silicone, really. Um, where's my sample? So if somebody, so somebody can blindfold me, and I can tell this is silicone, but I cannot smell the acetic acid after 18 days. Um, if someone blindfolded me with the one, the green one, oxine, I could still smell that slightly, the oxine after 18 days. Um, polyether, if I'm blindfolded, I'll smell the rubber smell. So just like I can kind of smell the silicone rubber, um, I can smell a little bit of the polyether, a natural rubber. So, well, I don't know if it's a natural rubber, but the inherent smell of the rubber. Um, and that, you know, when you're getting into extreme sensitivities, that could matter if you're not extreme. I mean, it's not like I can smell this from a ways away. Like, and I have an extreme sense of smell, keep in mind, when I say 18 days, this bloodhound level here. All right, so that's your paintable caulking. Now you can substitute, this is the last point, you could substitute. So the polyether comes in clear. I'll link the clear one. AFM caulking compound is white. That's kind of just your basic main one. It comes in, and there's a few brands that come in a, a few other colors if you need that. But there's a clear polyether, 
and that could be substituted for silicone in most cases. I mean, if you're doing something really unusual, um, you'll need to check the performance. And same with these, like in most cases, like this one might have more um, adhesive strength, but it's not like, it's not a big deal. Like you can use either of these for a countertop, um, both are used in bathrooms. But if you're doing something unusual, you should check the, definitely check the performance and the specs more in more detail. But so you could, in most cases, you could substitute in the clear polyether in lieu of a silicone, if you do better with that, which is possible, especially if you're looking at what's going to be more tolerable, tolerable right away, that's where you might find a bigger difference. Um, so you can use that around the bathroom areas and you could substitute a silicone for paintable areas, but it's usually gonna look weird. Um, it's usually gonna look weird if you use the clear. There could be some areas where you could use the white. And if we had to paint over it in the future, we would put a shellac type primer and then paint. So that can work. So I've seen people that had this like corner in their drywall, they had to seal it. And, um, and we did it that way with a shellac primer. So it can be done. So I wouldn't, I would try and choose two though. Like if you have, if you're not an extreme rush or if you're not the most extremely sensitive, have both around, test them ahead of time, know which one you have ready. Um, you could even keep one around or just know like, oh, okay, this one I can just, you know, maybe if you're fine with this one, you know, at least, okay, I can always go to the store and buy it. Or, you know, Amazon always, always changing their listings, but at least you could look for one on Amazon that's maybe could get there in a couple days, depending on where you live. Then the polyethers are usually special order. There's some of them you can find at the store, but they're going to be um, marketed very differently. They're going to be marketed maybe like for marine applications. So I would probably want a special order one because they're there. They do vary a little bit too, not enough to really like make a whole video on the different types, but um, you may want to test a few types if you're very, very sensitive, but I would know where you need to get that and know that it's probably not something you could run to the store and get more of if you're in the middle of a big project, if you're sealing all of your baseboards, you want to have enough. All right, so I think that's it. Okay, bye.